Mary Bogart. The following is a list of all of the slaves held by Mary Bogart, widow of Joseph Bogart. One male slave named Jerry, aged about 40 years, worth about dollar signs. That simply meant that the slave had value, but there's no specific dollar. They simply had to report that the slave was worth something and was still there. One female slave named Eliza, aged around 35 years. One male slave named Abram, aged about four. It's disturbing. So, you know, it's pretty clear he, he's four years old, which means he was born into slavery. Search, birth, marriage, death, Abe. Bogard, location of death, Kraken County, Kentucky. Let's see what we got here. Abe Bogard's death certificate. Death, November 4th, 1925. Male, colored, married. Date of birth, don't know. Wow, okay. That gives me what I'm thinking in terms of slavery. He probably would know. Age, about 72. Hmm. He died in 1925. So that would put him by 1853. That's right at the end of slavery. Abe probably was born into slavery. Name of father, Jerry. It's crazy because the nickname for Jerome is Jerry. Birthplace, don't know. May name of mother, Eliza. Okay, Eliza. Last name, don't know. Okay. I found my great-great-grandfather, A. Bogard's death certificate. And on there were my great-great-great-grandparents, Jerry and Liza with no last names listed. Since my great-great-grandfather Abe and his parents were alive prior to emancipation, I think I'm getting closer to confirming my ancestors' link to slavery, but I want to know for sure. All right, I got some work to do. Jerome Bettis just learned that his great-great-grandfather, Abe Bogard, and Abe's parents, Jerry and Liza, lived in Kentucky prior to emancipation. He wants to find out for certain if his ancestors were slaves. So Jerome is heading to Murray, Kentucky, where professor of African-American history, Dr. John Harden, has been doing some research into the family. Would there be any information that you can help me with uh, in regards to Jerry and Eliza? Mm. They're my great, great, great grandparents, no last name. So that tells me, I think, uh, that they were slaves. And I was trying to find out if I could confirm that. Well, one of the things to remember is that typically slaves would take the names of their slave owners. And there's a slave owner here in Callaway County, Joseph Bogard, uh, that might be a good candidate for this. I'm going to go look for those records, and I'll be right back. OK. I want to know the truth, but it's sobering to think I may have found the man who owned my ancestors and that my family name actually came from him. Okay. Wow. First thing we're going to look at is an index of slave owners. Okay. Let's search the index and see if we can find the will of Joseph Beauregard. What is that? Beauregard, uh, Joseph Beauregard. Wow. 484? 484. Let's okay. move this index aside. Let's go to the will book. Let's see if we can go to page 484 okay. and find it. No. 484. Mm -hmm. Let's just sort of read through this will read and see here. what you can find. I, Joseph Bogard, of the county of Callaway and state of Kentucky, bequeath to my beloved wife, Mary Bogard, during her natural life, the tract of land, the one half of my stock of horses, hogs, and sheep, 
also my Negro boy, Jerry, and my girl, Eliza, all of which at her death is to be equally divided among my children. 29th of May, 1841. Wow. My great, great, great grandfather and grandmother, Jerry and Eliza, were slaves. Mm -hmm. And they're being passed down mm -hmm. uh, in a will as property. Right. And that's, you know, that's, t that's despicable. They went from being people to property. Right. Um, now, I know 1841, it would be before Abram's birth, but would he be in any of these type of documents? In order to do this, we're going to have to look up something called the dower list of slaves. This is a slave dower list. Uh, so let's open this up and take a look at it. After 1844, widows of slave owners were supposed to report to the clerk every year all of their slaves. And this would reflect uh, the slaves that Mary Bogart would inherit. I got a Bogart, I got a, a Mary Bogart. The following is a list of all of the slaves held by Mary Bogart, widow of Joseph Bogart. One male slave, named Jerry, aged about 40 years, worth about dollar signs. That simply meant that the slave had value, but there's no specific dollar. They simply had to report that the slave was worth something and was still there. One female slave named Eliza, aged around 35 years. One male slave named Abram, aged about four. It's disturbing. So, you know, it's pretty clear he, he's four years old, which means he was born into slavery. Abe and Jerry and Eliza crop up in the dower list up to 1860, and we don't see them after that. Well, what, what do you think happened? By 1860, Mary Bogart died, and they would have to divide up the property. I found another court record that can help us. Okay. I think we start right here. It says, deed to the heirs of Joseph Bogard, October 5th, 1860, sold at public auction among said heirs, the following Negroes being all that belong to the estate of Joseph and Mary Bogard. H.A. Bogard became the purchaser of Jerry and Eliza and F.A. Hand, bought Abram at $1,363. Wow. Wow. It's disturbing in, a, in a, a number of different ways. One, there is a, a price, $1,363. That's all my great-great-grandfather was worth. But also, he was 10 years old, mm. and he's being separated from his parents. Mm -hmm. And... I think to my family and myself at 10 years old to be separated from my mother and father. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't think I could, I don't I can imagine having to do that. And even worse, as a father myself, that would, you know, that would destroy me. That really would, uh, to think that, you know, I couldn't raise my children. Wow.